You stop the thief from stealing in your life by honoring God with what you have. What you have is actually a weapon to protect you from things that you cannot see. Things that you don't know that are not supposed to happen. And if you don't focus, if you don't pay attention, it will happen. Think about all the events that occur. That occur not because God wants it to happen, but there's no honor to stop it. Now, I want you to get this revelation because it's so powerful that honor is a stopping anointing. Honor is a stopping anointing. That's why even David honored Saul so he stopped himself from proceeding to kill him even though he had the garment. King Jesus honored his father so he stopped himself from saying anything during the crucifixion. Wow. <laughs> this is so amazing to me. This is so amazing to me. He honored his father to the degree that he refused to say anything to the people while they was crucifying him. The Bible said in Isaiah that he refused to utter a railing word, an accusation against him. The same thing that happened with Michael when Satan asked for the body of Moses. He refused to get into that flow, he stayed in the flow of honor because the father didn't release Michael. Now, I want you to see this. The father released Michael to fight Satan in Revelation, but didn't release Michael to fight Satan in Jude, which shows you that you don't go to every battle with the same strategy. And honor synchronizes you to the current strategy for the current season you're in. So that's why a lot of people don't even know what to do because they're not in honor. So, so how, how could you know what the Father wants you to do if you're not in honor? How could you know what, what the Father wants you to say if you're not in honor? The honor is going to impart to you the appropriate response to the day that you're in. Now, saints, there's different days in the spirit. That's why King Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Malachi talked about the days of Elijah. In Samuel, it talked about in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. And so we see that days are dimensions. Days represent a region in the spirit. And you're not always in the same day. Even though you feel sad, you're not in the day of depression. Even though you see broke, you're not in the day of poverty. Even though you see illness, you're not in the day of health problems. You're in the day of healing. Even though you see confusion, you're in the day of wisdom. You see storm, you're in the day of peace. Now, says, did you notice that Jesus said, peace, be still? So actually, King Jesus wasn't really so much talking to the storm so much. He was talking to the peace. The wind and the waves obeyed him because peace 
was right there demonstrating its submission to Jesus. <laughs> it's just an anointed. I'm anointed to do this. I'm anointed. I'm anointed to do this. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The say liberty captives and open, open the prison to those that are bound. To. A lot of people don't even know what it means to be anointed. That means that God empowers you in a moment. To be anointed mean that God is pushing you. He's sponsoring you. You're not just doing a thing. There's the Holy Spirit that is inside of you that has become one with you for you to do it. And so if you are a talker, you're not just talking. The Spirit of God is talking in you. If you are a sower, you're not just sowing. The Spirit of God is sowing in you. If you're a worshiper, you're not just worshiping the spirit of God is worshiping in you. If, you. if you're a student, you're not just studying the spirit of God is studying in you. See, King Jesus studies himself. So he, he gives you his spirit so that you can know how to study him because he know how to study him. That's why I said that the spirit of a man searches out the man the same way the spirit of God searches out God. So when you receive the spirit of God, you're able to search him out and find him where he's thinking. Find him where he's talking. Find him where he's feeling. How do you think the Apostle Paul was able to write grieve not the Holy Spirit of God? How do we know that the Holy Spirit can be grieved? Apostle Paul was able to find the Lord via the Spirit that he was in a place of grief. So he said, grieve not the Spirit because this is where I found him at. I found a location where grief was operating. So make sure that you don't grieve him. So what you have in your possession is a weapon. You have to learn sowing from a place of protecting God's presence. When God exposes to you a piece of him, lets you know that this is what I enjoy, you supply that to him. That's how you keep your relationship with him strong. Did Lucifer get kicked out of heaven because Lucifer got kicked out of heaven? Or did Lucifer get kicked out of heaven because Lucifer stopped doing what God created Lucifer to do? You was created to worship, true worship. So that means that there's false worship. And false worship comes from the mouth, it refuses the hand. True worship comes from the hand, refuses the mouth. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. See, 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 see. The statement that I just said there, if <laughs> you're not listening close, if you got, um, if you got tigerism, tiger kingism, if you got Carolyn Baskins, <laughs> if you got, got Carolyn Baskins-ism, you ain't going to understand what I just said. And if you don't know who Carolyn Baskins is, who raised you? False worship is where you choose the mouth and refuse the hands. True worship is where you choose the hands and refuse the mouth. Are you seeing? Are you learning something? Are you le Oh, oh, shoot. That was arthritis trying to come upon me. I picked the two back up in there for Tupac. Machiavelli. 
How long were they moment? <laughs> How long were they mormon? How many of y'all can see me clearly? Am I clear? Praise God. I'm trying to be optimistic. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say praise the. Solomon didn't want to live off of King David's covenant. He wanted to create his own covenant with God. So he started sowing. Abel did not want to drop the ball like his biological father. He wanted to succeed, supersede where Adam went. He started sowing. Now, I want you to see that Cain hated Abel. This is the point that I want you to see above all else. If we pick Cain in the bracket of Satan, this is what happens when a child of God learns how to sow. Satan literally want to kill you because your seed is a tormenting weapon, is a tormenting device. The seed is how you discombobulate demons. Demons that want you to be homeless, demons that want you to be fearful, demons that want you to be sick, demons that want you to be afraid. It's the seed. See, my biological daughter, Zendaya Glory Holmes, I refuse to let her be vac vaccinated by this world system. Now, those of you all know over 100% of y'all let your child get vaccinated. <laughs> so don't, don't take what I'm saying and, and put no condemnation on yourself. There is now no condemnation. There's no, no niggeration to those that walk after the flesh, well, walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. There is no inauguration. So I'm not talking about you, all right? I don't tell you things for, to make you condemn. I tell you things so that your wisdom will grow. Information from God does not condemn you, it cleanse you. If you're taking notes, write that down. Information from God does not condemn you. It cleanses you. Ignorance is impurity. That's why people that operate in ignorance do wrong things. Because ignorance is impurity. Think about that. Ignorance is impurity. That's a wisdom door. Ignorance is impurity. Are you catching this? <laughs> no. Nah. I know the research show, I, I know research firsthand show that that the, the manifestation ain't right. I know the research firsthand. <laughs> Even if the scientists didn't do it, I know the research firsthand. I, I just... But I didn't let Zendaya Glory Holmes get the vaccination because there's something that I was studying. Why does a child come into the earth and need the, why do they need the natural realm? To empower them to function. They came from God. So why do they need this natural thing to enter their body to protect them? How does that make sense? And there has been an agenda on mankind because the same way that God makes you a new creation. And remember, I gave you the revelation on creation. Man has been constantly trying to clone. And they're so stupid. 
That's one thing God won't let a man do. They can't clone. They, he let them go into different things. They can't create another life in the basis of their scientists. Yeah, through sperm. Because God made man to multiply. He picked that. Now imagine. I have inside of me the ability to create. It's just a thought. My sperm is a life in itself. It's people in itself <laughs> that I can birth. Now, not from no elephant. Now, just don't get it wrong. I, it's not an elephant, you know. <laughs> it's not no... <laughs> it's not... It's not no, it's not no 14 income tax done passed, no 15 month. It's not that. All right, so you got to understand. It's actually a real person, person. And I noticed that doctors, they have such a push. They want to make sure that they vaccinate your children and they get angry at you. Every time I would see the doctor, the doctor would say, uh, are you ready for us to do it yet? No. And that's how I answer. I, I, I answer the doctor like that now. And I did that before the coronavirus and all these different type of things because I follow the spirit. Now, over majority of you all on this line, I predict in the realms of the Spiritu Santo that you are female. <laughs> and probably 2% that's confused. They don't know if they're female or male. Or they don't know, you know, they don't know that the thing that stick out is actually the confirmation. All right. But that, that's, that's how... Um, the, the horse, the horse, no. You have to be careful that Google does not become your source of wisdom. Be careful <laughs> that Google, <laughs> that Google does not become your source of knowledge. Now, let me just say this for one minute, then, I'm, then I'm, it's crazy that men have tried to do this transgender thing, meaning that uh, yeah, female, and, and I switched to man. But watch this here. You cannot experience an orgasm as a man by switching your parts. So if a man does that surgery to cut his thing off and act like he's a woman, he still cannot experience any sexual gratification in that area. So... I want you to see this, people of God, how it is a mindset. It is all in the mind. Because even what they're doing with their bodies does not make sense at all. They can't say that they're doing it so that they can feel sexual pleasure. Because you can't feel anything at all. And so it is the mind. I'm showing you how the mind has been the target all along. The soul is the mind. So if your mind is not being trained in the word of God, how much more are you actually a candidate to be dragged 
to hell like the multitude. Because if your mind has not been rescued, you fall in the bracket of all the billions of people whose mind hasn't been rescued either. What I'm showing you is that what is the purpose for the whole transgender thing? It's just the mind. Now, who put it in them? Lucifer. What is the purpose for you to fulfill him, she, ministry? <laughs> him, she. There's a sowing that creates soundness in your mind. When I was homeless, my sowing created soundness. So mentally, I was thinking as if I was already rich, blessed. I saw myself sitting on this couch. I saw myself living in high ceiling. Uh, uh, ceiling. I threw up Zendaya ball high up in the air and it would have hit the ceiling. Then I threw up Zendaya ball higher, higher, higher and still didn't hit the ceiling. Then I threw it up higher, 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 higher and it still didn't hit the ceiling. And when it's up in the air, Zendaya waiting for it to come down. But I envisioned that when I was sowing. Don't wave yourself from the sowing process because that's how God is going to create all the things for you to richly enjoy. Are you hearing me? This is how God is going to create all things for you to richly enjoy through the sowing. Saints, I'm going to tell you how God is real. When you sow in, the Lord will give you an appetite for a certain food and give it to you just to make you happy. When you sow in, God actually downloads certain things for you to desire so that he can supply it to you. So sowing actually makes you a basket mentally. It not only makes you a basket financially, it makes you a basket mentally. So God start dropping gold into you because he want to fascinate you with what he pitting inside of you. The Lord will start distributing the desire for things because that's what he's going to give you as your sowing. That's what he does. My sowing created my soundness of mind. One of the greatest decisions, one of the greatest decisions that I ever made in my life was to cry out to God for a thousand dollar seed. I was thinking about that. My greatest turning point in my life was when I cried out to God. And the Lord, he knows when you're serious. See, I got really serious and I got to the place where I didn't want to eat or drink because I said, Lord, if you don't pit this thousand dollar seed, I really don't want to keep on going on in life without doing this unto you. Saints, do you know what fascinates the father? Do you want to know what makes you a close friend of the father? Because that should be your main objective. What's your main objective for the next couple of years if Jesus refuses to come before that? It should be for you to be as close to him in friendship as possible. And you know that possibility has been removed. And far as, as far as boundaries and limitations, you can go as far as you want. 
there's nothing that can stop you. The Lord told me, he said, I often talk to you because everybody sleep right now. Everybody get in their rest. So I look for who's attentive. I look for who's hungry to hear me. So you get it. And so it benefits me because as a preacher, I get to preach on things that I don't have to worry about if it's being recycled. Or, or it, I, it could be recycled after I release it. But I don't have to worry about if it's, it was recycled before it got to me. Because he say a new thing. Remember the Bible said, come before the Lord with a new song. Well, he comes before you with a new mantle. That's the thing about it. See, we talk about uh, sing, come before the Lord, sing unto the Lord, a new song. But when you sing it unto the Lord, a new song, he going to come to you with a new anointing. With a new presence. With a new atmosphere. How many of you all know that the presence of a person can be different? The presence can be a presence of anger. It can be a presence of pride. You can feel arrogancy in a person. It can be the presence of criticism. It can be the presence of love. It can be the presence of patience. You know, if somebody give you instructions and you don't listen to their instructions and they keep on uh, uh, working with you, you know, that's the, peasant, the, the presence of patience. You can feel patience coming from them because why don't they harm you? Why do they wait for you to get things right? So presence has different thermostats to it and different manifestations to it. So imagine this. When I sow and I listen to God, I get different presences from him. When I'm following the spirit of the Lord with well, what I have, I receive a different presence. I receive the presence of let's talk, let's gossip together. Let's have a conversation with each other. Let's talk. What's up, Father? What's up, King Jesus? How you doing? That's where the Lord start telling you, I like your outfit. You look good. It's where the Lord compliments you. Take that off. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want you with that. That's where the Lord start talking with you. Shift it, shift it, shift it. It's falling. Babylon is falling, it's falling. Shift it. You got to shift it back on course. It's, it's like Balaam. It's like Balaam on that donkey. The donkey keep going over to the left with an F. Left with an F. Going over to the left with an F. Shift it. Shift. Shift. You wake up up there. Don't don't be quick to answer the door when you hear it knocking. Hey, you got to make sure you're good because blessed be God. There people, you forgot that you... Sometimes you ain't shifted. You took it all off and then you have to answer the, all right, I got it. How you doing today? Oh, 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 how you, how you doing? Is, 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 uh, is, is, uh, is Meredith upstairs? This is, this is Meredith. What you mean, baby? What you talking about? This Meredith, stop playing with me. Oh, how you doing today, Meredith? You done took out the camera phone. You trying what, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? No, I'm not doing nothing. I just want. No, I'm not going to do nothing. I just want to see. See, I just want to see. I just want to see what time it was because I got. I got to catch the bus. What you got to catch a bus for? You drove over here. Listen, you asking too much questions. But let me let me say this here. <laughs> I got two hats for sale in the back. I got I got Chicago Bulls hat. That was when Jordan won. <laughs> That's when Jordan won. I got that 1994, what, 1994, 96. It wasn't running around there before Tupac got shot. And he went go, there was a kick, Orlando, Orlando. It wasn't in Orlando, but he kicked Orlando. And we all know that Orlando was the one that shot him. Now, I got two hats. The other hat, I got, 
I got the Drake left foot in, uh, the right foot out, uh, do the honky tonky and, and shake it all about. That's what it's all about. It's just a remix. And, and that's the, now let me say this. Abraham received the presence of God ministering to him a wealthy place. That's what he received of the presence of God. The wealthy Jesus. Now, saints, I was reading something in the word, and this is so powerful. I'll talk about it probably another time. But it talked about King Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do a deep teaching on that. And I'm about to release uh, some teachings on YouTube in just a minute, like literally in the next, uh, in less than 72 hours, less than 48 hours. I'm going to release it on YouTube. Then I got a broadcast with me and Juan on there. And we'll talk about deep things on there. I was going to hold that until my last day on earth, but <laughs> I checked my palm palette. <laughs> I realized that that would be the years from now, so I'm going to release it now. I'm going to release it now. Now, and, and so I also have another video. Um, and in the video I'm talking about, you'll hear it. You'll hear it all. You'll hear it all. But I'll release it on YouTube. Job had received a different presence from God. <laughs> How am I going to talk in third person? Don't do one like that. Juan, if, Juan, if you ever fail God, I'm just going to make you my grass cutter. That's what I'm going to do. If, if Juan ever sin against God, you're going to know it because every time I get on the broadcast, you're going to hear, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Excuse me. A poquito. Excuse me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, y'all, I mean, y'all praying for a miracle because every Saturday when you're trying to sleep in, they always coming. And I'm not talking about a good way. I'm not talking about pleasureness. They always coming on, on Saturday. Like, what? You came last Saturday. Why are you here again? Every time. And then, and then it's them days where you done purpose in your heart to sleep extra. And then they're going to come right there and act like they, that, that noise. Wait, that's an idea. Electronic grass cutters. Okay, so I'm going to cut this broadcast off. And so, so I can pattern that. I just, I just thought about it, right? Electronic grass cutters. And then, ain't nobody going to be able to hear that yin 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 yin. Because When you are sowing, you activate a presence from God that's very unique. Because now the Lord starts digging deep in your life for things that make you happy. The seed is where God pulls up your desire from seven years ago. And he pulls up the fowls. And he brings the angels into the conversation of things that you dreamed about. Honoring God is the super weapon that makes you a superwoman or a superman. The seed, it draws God 
into your unspoken request. Oh my gosh. If you take a note, write that down. Remember what I just said there. The seed, it draws God into your unspoken request. Things that you don't utter with your lips. The seed will communicate it to the father for you. Listen, there have been things that you couldn't verbalize because you didn't know how to pit it to the Lord. And there were things that you didn't even know if it was sinful. <laughs> so you didn't pit it to the Lord. Because you didn't want to sound like you was, you was sinful. But when you are a sower and you're listening to the Holy Spirit with what you have, he'll actually show you. That's what I'm, that's the direction that I'm going to answer you then. Now, the seed, it also purges your heart of a lot of things that you're not supposed to ponder upon. And sometimes you got in your mind, oh, I want to, I want to kill, I want to kill Deidrean. <laughs> Father, will you do that for me? Will you handle that? If I put another thousand on it. <laughs> if I put another thousand on it, can you, can you kill him in the sleep? You did it with, you did it with the Egyptians. God, so I know you got it on you. I know you done did it before. And I heard Ty, I heard Ty Trippin said, if he did it before, he'll do it again. I heard it. So if I pit another thousand, pit about 500 on it. You think I pit on their way? You think you'll handle it? And so sowing, it purges you of wrong thinking. Because while you're honoring God is a heart surgery. Sowing is a soul surgery. Sowing is a soul sanctifying process. And so your soul is being divided from things that's not from the Lord. And so when, when you're operating in the seed, financially, your soul is learning how to operate in the seed Concerning the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to the Father. Yeah, yeah. So now, how you view things is from a place of a pure heart. It's pure. It's not corrupt. Is not carnal. Is not of Cain. But is of Abel. Because Abel was sowing out of a pure place. And, and Abel knew how to take the money that he had. And worship God with it. And God was giving Abel everything. God told me that Abel was moving in visible wealth. Visible prosperity. Do you think that that's the reason why Cain, do you think that Abel had invisible prosperity? That's why he looked at Abel with jealousy? No, he was watching Abel wearing that new lion skin on him. <laughs> Cain was out there trying to kill the lion. Come on, Nick. Get your, get, get your son. Get, 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 get back over, get back over there. And Abel came wearing the lion skin on him and just. And Abel messed around, and pulled out the cigar. The Jerusalem cigar, the Samaria cigar. And he ain't even had no light on nothing like that. What my light? What? 
And that, that, don't worry about it. I don't need it. No way. I don't want no smoke on it. I just want it. <laughs> and while Cain was looking at him from a distance, realized he had on lion skin. I, I, I try to kill a lion. So, so, so then Cain went to God. God, how come, how come he wear lion skin? I'm up there lying. God was like, if you do well, do, 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 do. <laughs> I think I think God put a little sarcasm in there because he got offended. I think God made him feel a little slow, like do, 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 do. you only gave me two dollars. <laughs> like, duh, like what are you mad, bro? You big mad, huh? I think God put a little sarcasm in there because Cain got offended. <laughs> now, I want you to catch this, that you don't want to become a Cain and retire your financial mantle. Did you catch that? Retire your financial mantle to soul. You don't want to retire your sowing assignment from the Father in heaven. Because people of God, that's what Cain did. Cain actually said, guess what? I quit. I'm not, I'm not listening to this. This whole sowing stuff, I ain't listening to this. And it produced murder. Which really means that he was governed by hatred instead of love. That's why sowing is so important. Because it's governed by love. Nobody can love you if they're not a sower. No relationship works. If sowing stops, that's not your business partner just because you think that they do good business. You think that they do good business because they are a sower. The sowing aspect of the father must overtake an individual if you're going to treat people correctly. In alignment with the spirit. If the Holy Spirit can't have your money. He can't have your reactions. He can't have your decisions. Abel was so close to God because of the seed. And it was the seed that spoke to the father and said I want you to be my best buddy. I want you to talk to me day and night. I want you to fill me with your spirit. I want your spirit not to hover over the waters, hover over me. I worship you with what you put in my possession. Saints, do you know why work is so powerful? Because work means, God, I'm going to solve a problem so that I can worship you. Some of you all in JHM, when I met you, and, and nobody will never know your story. You ain't had nothing. <laughs> Talking about sowing a thousand dollar seed, five hundred dollar seed was like telling you to 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 go to the moon with Dennis Rodman <laughs> in in a wedding dress. Don't think about it. Don't don't. But now you have surpassed a lot of things <laughs> because you listen to me. You know what it feels like to sow a thousand dollar seed. My testimony is not just something that you hear and say, oh, oh, you know, I wonder what that means. You know what it feels like.
because you listened to me. You saw my instructions as actually a reach for love. You heard my corrections as a way to express a fatherly care of seeing you live your best life. What if you didn't listen to me? How many times where you would have left the father unattended because what he was telling me to tell you was actually to cause you to magnify his presence every moment that he gives you something that you would now be conscious of him, not conscious of all those other things that was pulling away your attentiveness all your life. So many times people live their whole life robbing God of the seed, never giving him the seed. And they hurt him and he just has to hurt in their presence. God has become professional in not voicing his broken heart around non-sowers. He has become a professional. But for those that will tap into the spirit of the Lord and let the Holy Spirit lead them to supply God with an activity that he loves, he enjoys this. They shall be crowned with riches and many other incentives and rewards that they have never spoken with their mouth. The seed causes God to enter into your belly and investigate what will satisfy you. The seed. One of the best decisions I made in my life was to pray for a thousand dollar seed because it brought me into seeing Jesus full time. Not what people do. Not what the world do, but seeing King Jesus full time. It brought me into having a God focus. A dedication to him. I am that I am because of the oneness I experienced that the more that I sold, the more divinity was able to tangibly manifest. The seed, it makes you rich as a person, mentally, emotionally. You don't lack joy because you're rich emotionally. God loves a cheerful giver. But I want to say this, that a giver has authority over cheerfulness. Oh my God. Did you just catch what I just said? I said, oh my carapaco, Lebrondo. Did, 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 did you just catch what I just said? I just said a giver has authority over cheerfulness. So when a giver is given, even if they're not cheerful, they have authority to tap into cheerfulness off of revelation. How many of you all ever heard a word that quickened your attitude and now you saw things differently? Well, that's what happened. The word gave you authority. The seed of the word gave you authority to possess that which was being preached to you. How much more when you are a seed sower, you have authority over all the things that come in alignment with that seed being sown. And one of those things is cheerfulness. 
Because since God put it in you to sow and give, he also put it in you to do it in the spirit that it's supposed to be. He gives you the power to do it in the spirit that it's supposed to be carried out in. So God releases all that supernatural cheerfulness as you are operating in the sea. And as long as you let the Holy Spirit rule you with what you have, he'll let you rule with what he has. Don't live smaller in the natural than God wanted you to live. And he has all those things in the supernatural. Don't live small in the natural. Bring the supernatural to the natural by staying supernatural with everything that God pits in your hands. Bring down the heavenly manifestation of all spiritual blessings. Bring it down. Pull it out from under the curtain, from out of the closet. Don't let your finances be trapped in the closet no longer. Let it come forth in full visibility, effectiveness, abundance, and let it abound towards you. Take your, your liberty to honor your God on the earth. In a world where dishonor has become the trend. In a world where dishonor has become the usual. Now take your liberty to do something unto the spirit of the Lord that other people. They'll say no. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow, straight is the way that leads to life. And only a few there be that find it. Only a few. Only a few. Why couldn't the rich man sow? Because only a few. He will have to become straight and narrow before God. That mean that you can't have that fatness of pride, that fatness of excuses, that fatness of wrong thinking. He had to be straight and narrow and God had to edge him out and cut off all of that excess of darkness. What if he would have said yes? Well, he chose him. What if? What if he would have chose the route of the Spirit? It would have been the best time of his life with Jesus. This more than ministry. This is my life. Walking with the Spirit of the living God. It's more than a teaching and a wisdom. It's more than a revelation. This is who I am. You ever wonder why people, they never go crazy. They never lose. It's because there's an anchor. That's the spirit of the living. That's the spirit of the living. That's the spirit of the living God. This act of sowing makes the Lord Jesus remember you. He told that woman that broke open the alabaster box, wherever the gospel is preached, you will be honored, remembered. I want to 
say something that never been said before. You notice that King Jesus said, wherever the gospel is preached, you will be honored. Guess what? Every time we preach on that woman, she get a new mansion. Remember, honor does not come without any investment. Every time a preacher opens up their mouth and talk about the woman with the alabaster box, she gets a new reward in heaven. She gets a new crown. She gets a new celebration. She gets a new eternal reward. That's how powerful sowing into your God is. Ah! That's how powerful it is for you to honor your God. For you to pick King Jesus first above anything in this life. You lean not to your own understanding, but you acknowledge the Holy Ghost. And you live a peculiar life as a peculiar people. The Lord will look upon your sowing. He'll use it not only to honor you on earth. Not only on earth will men give into your bosom, but for all eternity. Let all the mass of glory by. 